So in June of 2018, this patient is seen in his doctor's office, and at that time, he is noted to have an increase in his M protein. Therefore, it is decided to do a further workup. This patient is noted to, over the preceding few months, have dropped their hemoglobin from 12.9 uh, gram per deciliter to 10.2 gram per deciliter. Uh, the patient uh, doesn't have uh, renal insufficiency or hypercalcemia, but on uh, closer interrogation does say that he feels more fatigued. So this patient is clearly having the progression of disease at this point. In the second line uh, uh, of treatment, we uh, consider a number of factors before deciding what is the appropriate intervention. The uh, choices uh, are manifold, so we have to consider what the patient got in their front line of treatment, how they responded to their front line of treatment, how they tolerated their treatment, whether they progressed on treatment or had a treatment-free interval. We also need to know what the pace of relapse of the patient is. In uh, this case, we have a patient who is starting to get somewhat symptomatic. His performance status is somewhat limited. It's a performance status of two. And also, uh, he has high-risk chromosomal features with the 17p deletion. So all these factors do uh, need to be taken into consideration when deciding what treatment to give this patient. The choices of treatment are informed once again on the number of clinical trials that we have had the luxury of uh, being able to look at over the years. We have trials uh, looking at three drug regimens of uh, Kyprolis with Revlimid and Dexamethasone, Ixazomib with Revlimid and Dexamethasone, Elotuzumab with Revlimid and Dexamethasone compared to Revlimid and Dexamethasone. We've had trials that have looked at more recently daratumumab with revlimid and dexamethasone, comparing it to revlimid and dexamethasone. On the other hand, we have trials that have looked at uh, trying to improve on a standard of Velcade-based treatments. Uh, we have had uh, Kyprolis dexamethasone versus bertizumab dexamethasone. We've had Faradac with uh, Velcade and dexamethasone compared to Velcade and dexamethasone. And more recently, at the ASCO meeting in June of 2018, we've had a trial of uh, bertizumab with pomalidomide and dexamethasone compared to uh, bertizumab and dexamethasone. So we have a lot of different treatment options for patients these days. The way I approach it is that initially I try to figure out if a patient has a biochemical progression or whether they have true symptomatic progression. Um, for those who have a biochemical progression, I'm inclined to these days even go and get a PET scan to make sure there is no subclinical uh, disease activity that is starting to emerge that hasn't rendered the patient symptomatic as of yet, but may do so in the near future. And uh, we also go ahead and repeat the bone marrow biopsy to look for both the degree of plasmacytosis and the chromosomal features. For those that are having an indolent disease progression, often the use of elotuzumab with uh, lenalidomide and dexamethasone is appropriate. Uh, I think that there's some uh, controversy in the field whether elotuzumab uh, would be active in patients who have already had prior lenalidomide, as most people in the United States have and are often on at time of progression as maintenance. But I think that for those who are biochemically progressing and have no other features, uh, it is an appropriate choice of therapy to consider. And if not effective, then one can certainly easily move on to something else. For those that have more symptomatic progression, then one has to look for alternatives. And there, I think one has to look at, again, how symptomatic a patient is, what the pace of progression is, um, and I think in an elderly patient like this, uh, it is with a limited performance status, and often these patients find it difficult to come to the doctor's office uh, uh, to get uh, therapies that uh, are given intravenously or subcutaneous. Those patients want an all oral option. And I think in this case, it is absolutely appropriate to try a three-drug regimen of ixazomib with lenalidomide and dexamethasone. 
Uh, this patient had only a finite period of lenalidomide. He's been off lenalidomide for several months now. So I think that this patient uh, could uh, very well respond and could have the convenience of an all oral regimen. Uh, we also know based on subset analysis uh, of the uh, trial, the Dormalin 1 study uh, published in blood recently, that uh, even patients with 17P deletion do well uh, with uh, what may otherwise be perceived as a gentle regimen of exazomib, lenalidomide, and dexamethasone. Uh, in fact, the benefit in the 17P deleted patients uh, was more marked than the whole population. Um, so I think that uh, in this patient, I would say that a trial of uh, exazomib with lenalidomide and dexamethasone would certainly be appropriate.